We're gonna go ahead and download the JavaFX SDK file. Again, we go on the Gluon website and we scroll down to downloads and look for our specific platform. I'm using Linux uh, within x64 architecture. So we're gonna go ahead and click download. When we finish downloading, we're gonna go to our download folder and extract the folder. We're going to start with Eclipse, so let's open up Eclipse. Once when Eclipse is open, we're going to start a new Java project. I'm going to name it Checkers. Make sure that module is unchecked because for this to work, you would need to download the JMods and do a completely different installation process. So we're going to go ahead and click Finish. Now you want to fill in the source folder with your code. I went ahead and put in my uh, source code for the example that I'm going to use. We're going to go ahead and add a user library to our IDE. So we go to Window, Preferences, go to Java, Build Path, User Libraries, New. Give it a name. I'm just going to call it JavaFX. Then we're going to add external jars. And you want to go to where you ex extracted the uh, JavaFX folder. And you want to go into its library folder and select all the uh, jars. And click apply and close. Now that we have our user library, we're going to right click the class that uses JavaFX and we're going to go to build path, configure build path. We're going to click on libraries under mal module path. We're going to click add library. Make sure it's user library selected. Click JavaFX, apply and close. If you try running it right now, you're going to get an error code that it cannot find and load the uh, JavaFX application. To fix this, you right click, go to build path, configure build path, and we're going to go to run debug. It might already have one, but I'm just going to create a new one, Java application. And in arguments, you want to make sure that you have the module path, which is where you extracted your uh, JavaFX folder, and it should point to the library folder. And you also want to add these two modules, the JavaFX controls and JavaFX.fxml. So I'm going to add both of these in the VM arguments and click apply, OK, apply and close. So now it should work. Since my other file uses JavaFX, we're going to do the same thing with this one. We're going to go to Build Path, Configure Build Path. It already has JavaFX as the library, so we're just going to go to Run, New, JavaFX, Arguments, and we're going to put the same VM arguments. So now this should work. And now this should work. And there you go. This time we're gonna do it with IntelliJ. So let's go ahead and open IntelliJ. We're gonna create a new project. I'm gonna call it Checkers. And unlike Eclipse, IntelliJ doesn't install Java. So you're gonna have to download a JDK. And create. Go ahead and create your source code and your code layout. I went ahead and added my checkers client and server as an example. We're going to add the JavaFX library to IntelliJ. So we're going to go to File, 
um, project structure. Click on libraries and we're going to add a new Java library. Look for where you extracted your Java FX folder. For me, it's in the downloads section. So we're going to go ahead and select the lib folder because that's where all the library files are at. Click OK. Click OK. Apply. OK. In IntelliJ, we need to create a module info file so that we can tell the IDE where to look for these JavaFX components. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click the source folder, click new, click on module info.java. It's going to show the module checkers and we want to add this. In my program, I'm going to have the client and server packages. These two open to different programs, so I'm going to include both of these. But make sure you have requires JavaFX.controls and requires JavaFX.fxml. So here, let me go ahead and do that. And I'm going to save it. So now that everything is finished, now we can go ahead and run our programs. I'm going to run my server first. And then I'm going to run my client. And as you can see, they're both working. We're going to go ahead and use Visual Studio Code. So we're going to go ahead and open Visual Studio. Let's create a Java project. No build tools. VS Code. And we're going to call it Checkers. Go ahead and add the uh, files to your source folder. I already added the ones I'm going to use for this example. Visual Studio Code doesn't have a built-in Java environment like IntelliJ and Eclipse does. So we're going to have to install that on our operating system. On Linux, uh, you go to the Oracle website, go to Java Technologies Downloads, and we scroll down and find the appropriate one that we're going to use. Once we download it, we're going to go ahead and install it. So now that the GDK is installed, we're going to go ahead and reopen Visual Studio. So notice how it's now able to read our Java program and we have these red lines. We're going to go ahead and add the JavaFX library. Let's open up Java projects. And we're going to add reference libraries. We're going to go to our uh, JFX folder that we extracted. And we're going to select all the jar files. And now the red squiggly lines are gone. So in order to get this program working, we need to add the VM arguments. In order to do that, we're going to go to run and debug and create a launch.json file. And this will tell the program how to launch the uh, each individual uh, class. So here we're going to add a line to both our client and server. Now, I troubleshooted and I came across two issues. One is that the VS Code doesn't 
read the squiggly line really well, so I had to hard code the whole um, path to the library folder. And another is that it was unable to get the class, the FXML class, so I omitted it since we probably don't need it. So we're going to add this line to our uh, launch configuration. So here we have VMRGs and we do the module path and write in the JavaFX controls module. And we'll do the same thing here. So now that that's added, we're going to go ahead and run our program. First, let's run the server. Okay, we got that working. Then let's run the client. All right, and let's run another client. And there you go. If you're using Windows, you're gonna have to do something a little different for your uh, VM arguments. Every time you use module path, you're gonna have to enclose the path in quotation marks and in VS code you're actually going to have to hard code the quotation marks since it's already using quotation marks for the uh, VM arguments. 